this video, we're going to talk about what eBay, Facebook Marketplace is telling me about the real economy. Let me go ahead and give you a little backstory. I was running one of my tiny experiments trying to sell Apple products on eBay. And actually, it started to kind of work out. Then I started to sell more stuff. And then, actually, let me go further back. Last year when I moved, I had a lot of stuff to get rid of. And I gave a lot of that stuff away. Just put it on the curb, put the address on Craigslist and let people know where it was and that stuff would literally disappear in an hour, right? So if I knew what I know now, I would have sold all that stuff when I was in the house because there's a cost to living in a high rise because I just got a new bedroom set today, right? And I decided to give my old bedroom set away because of what I have learned on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and eBay. Let me explain. Last year, when I moved out of the 5,000 square foot house and I moved into an 1,800 square foot apartment, I had to get rid of a lot of stuff. So I rented a storage unit and I was really judicious because you know my background, I used to do storage auction. I know that keeping stuff in storage units long term is not a good look for your financial future. So I rented a storage unit October, October, November, December, I had a washer and dryer in there. I had a bedroom set. I had a treadmill, a living room set, and uh, some video lights and other stuff. So I sold them. I sold everything except for the bedroom set. I sold everything pretty quickly. I sold everything pretty much by November. So at this point, the storage unit was costing me $2.41 per month, and I had made $5,000. Then, trying to sell this bedroom set. I must have listed this bedroom set 25 times. 25 times. Now the bedroom set included two nightstands and a dresser and it was really nice. It was an old bedroom set, about 12 years old. But it took me months to sell that bedroom set, months. And I was looking at my old bedroom set and this was included a bed, two nightstands, a dresser, and a chest. And here's one of the reasons that went into my factor to sell it because of stuff that I've learned on eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace. First of all, because I live in a high rise, I was going to have to hire someone to move the bedroom set to 250. And then because of the size of the bedroom set, I already have two storage units. I'm gonna tell you about that. I was going to rent another storage unit. And between 250 and 450, 250 per month. So to move and manage this bedroom set for four months was gonna cost me 1200 bucks. This is the problem. I could not sell that bedroom set for $1,200. In the marketplace I'm participating in the marketplace and this is what I see all right um, we're getting down to it if you want to get into the intellectual property school you need to go below and get into it so you can start building up some additional revenue streams to weather the next two years because the next two years is gonna be funky and this is one of the reasons that I am, you know, getting rid of stuff because when I have a whole bunch of stuff up in my spear, it messes with my chi. So I like to be lean and mean and I'm getting rid of stuff. And that's why I'm giving a bunch of stuff away. So once again, if you want to be in the intellectual property school, go below, hit that first link and you can jump in because we're getting ready to do a lot of stuff. Like right now, I've got all of the training complete on how to set up your YouTube channel for tax benefits. 
And yesterday I added not one, but two videos talking about your equipment. I got the down and dirty version and I got the middle road up to baller road for getting video equipment. But all that's below, just go below, hit that link, and I will see you in the group. Came from Pottery Barn, even though it was nice. I, I couldn't sell it for $1,200 because you could go out and get a brand new bedroom set for $700. And the price of new goods dramatically impact the price of used goods because the consumer, you, the consumer, you know that that bedroom set costs 700 bucks new somewhere. So why would you even pay anything more than that for a used bedroom set? That's the methodology. That's the thinking, which makes sense. And I understand that, which once again, played into the role of uh, me giving this bedroom set away. Because my original plan was to put it downstairs and just give it away on Craigslist. But the people who brought my new bedroom set, they knew of a home or a church and got took some pictures and they actually took the bedroom set. So it was clean and I didn't even have to manage with it. But what I am finding out, because when I first started selling this stuff on eBay and like, you know, if you eBay, the best night to list stuff on eBay is Sunday. Uh, once again, I violated that rule. I'll talk about that right now. I actually listed some stuff on some days that were not Sunday and the results were pretty, pretty bad. I had, because when I, when I started selling on eBay, I uh, list on Sunday because I'm a professional seller. That's the best day of the week to list on because most people are home or they can be near their computers on Sunday. Listing during the week before nine o'clock can be a little dicey unless it's a buy it now option. And I have had several items, and this has been happening the last three months, where people would bid on stuff and get ghosted after they win the item. This has happened several times across the board. I have routinely, let me go ahead and tell you my new strategy. Everything that I have listed on eBay, I have listed as a buy it now because I, because this is the thing. Whenever I list some stuff, because I list stuff at 99 cent auction, I get Jesus, Moses, Jeremiah, all these folks coming at me like, hey, would you take some ridiculously low ball amount? Because they feel that I'm desperate. See, this is the thing, because it's like, why would he list it at 99 cents? He must be desperate. So I would get have to entertain all of these ridiculously crazy lowball offers. So what I did this time, because once again, this, this is a methodology, the eBay where I would list stuff and people would bid on it. And then when they won the bid, they would pay. That eBay is gone at the moment. It is gone. So. Everything I have, because once again, I put up a lot of good stuff this Sunday um, and I've been hit up and I just respond with my buy it now offer and I'll hear from them again because here's the thing. There's two groups of people on eBay and Facebook. There's people with money who see a good deal. They'll jump on it. No hassle, no fuss. And then there's the broke segment. And these are the people who are looking for ridiculous deals. Like once again, this, this is what the, the real economy is telling me from Facebook, Craigslist and eBay. I've got a BMW 2008 550i. The bumper's hanging off of it. Cost a bumper 1600 to $3,000 to fix that bumper, right? I tell people up front, that the bumper is hanging off and I've included not one picture, but six pictures of the bumper hanging off. Of the bumper hanging off. But these yard birds see the price and show up and they're hoping and they're praying that the damage isn't as bad as what I said in the ad. Go ahead, let's walk through this. You go on Craigslist, you see an ad, a guy tells you he has a car, he's selling you. He tells you that the car is damaged. He tells you that the car has issues. 
You know this before you even come out and look. They come out. Oh man, it's really like that. They're hoping that I am some incompetent dumbass that's listing perfectly good stuff on eBay, Craigslist, and e eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace. They're hoping, they're praying that it's not as bad as I said it was in the ad. Once again, these are the lessons I've learned from eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace. The economy, the real economy, the real economy is melting now crazy fast because the stimulus economy, stimulus economy is gone. Stimulus economy is out. Stimulus economy has left the building. And these people are having to deal with their real money. I'm having people who are going to credit unions to get credit union loans for $5,000 cars. Well, my credit union won't give me any money on that because it has over 100,000 miles. I'm just sitting here like, I, I'm perplexed. I am perplexed. This happened this morning. A guy did a buy it now. I was asking 350 for the iPhone. He did 330. I said, okay, you know, that's, that's fair enough. I'll take that. He buys it this morning. I get an email from him asking this, 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 like several paragraphs about the condition, the battery health, stuff that should have been addressed before he purchased the phone. And I like, look, the phone is fine. Everything that's, you know, you see, there's, there's several pictures. You should be able to look at the picture and tell if the phone is scratched, right? So I was like, when are you going to pay? And then he hit me up with this. I'm gonna pay as soon as you answer my questions. Boom. Cancel sale, relisted item. See, I am a terrible, terrible, terrible car salesman. Because I don't deal with foolishness. I don't deal with attitudes. And once again, let me go ahead and share some stuff with you. I know that, once again, that's one of the reasons I gave away the bedroom set is that takes time. Like if you want to sell stuff on eBay, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, as soon as someone messages you, you need to be up on it. Because, you know, these things are like ice cream. They, they expire. They all melt on you. I know this. And every morning I get several responses from people about my cars and I don't get around to them because I got stuff to do. I got things to do that I know will put money in my pocket. And once again, I'm a terrible car salesperson. I'm terrible because I'm not prompt. I have an attitude. I talk a little smack. And like once someone just hit me up today, it's like, will you take this? And I said, let me explain something to you. If I accept your offer, these are my terms. You will come pick up the car, I will give you the keys, sign over the title, you give me the cash, and you'll be gone. If you want to offer me this, then come out, bring your scanner and do all this other stuff and go over the car and use that as a starting point to go lower, I actually said, skip me. I don't have time for that crap. That was my response. And he, he's like, he, he responded back. Like, I can come get the car today. I'm like, we will see. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But once again, I'm not, I'm not desperate. And that's the thing that, my, remember my video, The Economic Wolves? People sense desperation and they're trying to feast. But I am not desperate. Like, I will do this in a heartbeat because these folks with eBay, because last week I had um, some computers up and to my error, I put in one additional picture that shouldn't have been there. Just one little picture. That one little picture in those two auctions was enough to freak folks out. And people start talking to me like I was like a child, like, hey, I need for you to send me pictures of the box and blah, blah, I was like, 
cancel, relist, cancel, relist. Because one of the things that I'm seeing, and this is people who are dealing with, people deal with credit differently than they deal with their real, their cash money. They're more judicious, they're more careful. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be careful with your cash money. This is something I preach on this channel. You should be careful with your cash money. But these people are on the point of being paranoid because literally these guys kept emailing me and asking me like this one yard bird. He, he, he was bidding and he got outbid by a guy who didn't pay. And then I sent him a second chance offer one day. He didn't know, then he hit me up and he's like, I need this picture, I need that picture. And I'm like, ignore. Because here's the thing, kids. When the person has a million questions, there's a 99% chance that they're not going to buy. So the more questions that they have, could be because you did a really bad job of selling. Like, I literally, this is what I did. I took a picture of the computer, several angles. There's no dents, there's no scratches. I went and took a picture of the operating system, the storage, all of this stuff, screenshots. There's like 15 pictures there, 15 pictures. So after seeing 15 pictures, and seeing my feedback, which has a lot of recent sales of Apple products, hundred, you know, the great seller. Man, they couldn't, these things were out of stock. These folks are still scared, scared to let loose that money because we're dealing with the real economy right now. People are dealing with their real money. They're dealing with their real financial means. And based upon what I have, like I said, this is what I just came back from doing. Tomorrow, I am going to give away all of the stuff that I have in storage. I have two storage units. And I'm acutely aware those storage units, like one storage unit's 250 and one's 140. So I'm paying almost $400 to store stuff that I don't want. Three months, that's 1200 bucks. Once again, it's more expedient and it's more profitable for me to give this stuff away than to keep hanging on to it because I want, you know, this whole moving out of a house into a high rise, there's a cost to living in a high rise. Because, you know, if I was still in my house, I could have just slid that bedroom set into the garage and sat on it as long as I needed to sit on it without paying any additional money until it's sold. Going back to, if I knew what I know now, I would have sold this stuff in the house. It would have been easier, it would have been cheaper. I wouldn't have had the storage of Like, I'm still way ahead because between eBay and Craigslist and Facebook, I did about $25,000 in sales. However, I'm on the precipice of paying $3,000 for storage fees. Now let's go ahead and say I was Johnny Dum Dum and I left the stuff in storage for another year. That would be $4,000 to hold on to stuff that I don't want. Let's say I, I, I let it roll and I just got busy with life and didn't, you know, out of sight, out of mind, let the stuff stay in there three years. That's $12,000. That's $12,000 for some stuff that I don't want. So I went there to the storage units today, took pictures, and I'm not putting this up tonight because these people will be hitting me up at 12 o'clock at night saying this is stuff still there. I'm gonna get up in the morning, I'm gonna go to the gym, and when I come back from the gym, then I'm gonna list all this stuff. And I'm just gonna give it away. Just give it away because of what I have learned from eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace. People don't have money. And I got one car, because this is one of the things that I would do. Uh, the beginning of the month, 
someone would get the best deal, right? And there's an opportunity cost with me holding on to these cars because I have nine cars left. And it's like, and two of them, two of them are wrecked and one has mechanical issues. And once again, I tell them in the ad, this car, and like they will set, like I said, the service engine light on and it was like, yeah, well the check engine light on, no, no, no fool. The check engine light isn't on. The car needs service. It needs a tune up. So you know what I'm gonna do? First of September, I'm gonna give that puppy away because I'm getting plenty of deductions on my taxes from this car. I'm just gonna give it away just to set the temperature for this month of September and hopefully I will sell four cars in September, which would put me down to four cars left. Because one of the things, like I said, I'm a very bad car salesman because when someone messages you, the faster that you message them back and set up an appointment, the more likely you are to make a sale. And I'm about to say something. My black folks, you have been the worst people in this selling of cars. I have sold to Asians. I have sold to Hispanics. I have sold to white people. You know what happens? They come, they inspect the car, they drive the car. 30 minutes later, they breaking me off cash. I'm selling the top and they about their life. But you black folks, want to do all kinds of extracurricular stuff and waste my time. And literally, because once again, I don't know who is going to show up until I get there to see them at the car. And at the lately, I have been cussing. I have been cussing when it's a black person. Because I know that there's a 80% chance of some fuckery going down. And once again, I have a very bad attitude about this, which I'm aware of, I'm very aware of. And what I'm gonna do, since I'm a business person, and the reality of the situation is that people don't have money. So I'm gonna reprice the cars for September. I'm gonna give that one BMW away. Just give it away, get it gone. So I'll have eight cars and then work on that. Cause I really wasn't, I was gonna, you know, I'm asking like 3,000 bucks. And you know, or I may just bomb the price and get rid of this car. Because this stuff impacts my day. Like, um, just going over there to take pictures and, cause I hate leaving here to go have a potential of making some money. I hate that. Cause once again, these people, uh, it's in the ad, they know they're coming to look at a damaged car and when they get there, they act surprised that it's damaged, that it has issues. I'm just sitting there and like, I've developed, I know within five minutes if they're gonna buy the car or not. Five minutes. And once that five minute period, I was like, oh shit. Or the, the new ploy, like I got one car, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Looks good, starts, drives well. I need my mechanic to look at it because they are not confident enough in their ability to know. Cause like there's one car, white couple came and looked at it. 30 minutes later, they gave me the money and the GPS tracker is still on it. He's a speeder. I get GPS alerts virtually every day. I sold that car six months ago. It's still working. So what I'm seeing here is people are desperate. People don't have any money. And this is the age of the lowball offer. I, I have this computer, this, this computer, which cost me $13,000, right? 13,000 for an iMac Pro. And I've got it on eBay. I paid 13,000 for this three years ago. So I have it on eBay for like 7,000. I'll take six. And then I have another MacBook Pro, because if you didn't know, every few years I upgrade my computers and switch out, even if there's nothing wrong with them, because 
this is what I use to make money. I always make sure that the things that I use to make money are in tip top working order. I will never have a computer just crash on me because I dogged it out. It, it ain't gonna happen because I, I make too much money to be messing around. Like I, I saw this post years ago, this girl who was in a similar business as I am, her MacBook Pro crapped out and she could not work for, and at the time Mac didn't have computers. She was without a computer for two weeks. Once again, this right here, this, this is a laptop that costs $6,000. I'm not telling you this to impress you, impress you. I'm telling you this to impress upon you that if you have a business, you need to take care of your business. This is a backup. This could become a desktop if I needed it. It's maxed out eight terabytes of storage. It's got, let me see. I think the most you can get in RAM on these is 16. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, oh no. It's got 64 gigabytes of memory, eight terabytes of storage, and it's got the Apple M1 chip. It's maxed out, it's maxed out. And then I have another computer it's gonna be the trading computer. That should be here next week. And I've already have the screens, the monitors, and I've already got this desk positioned. So once again, that's how I roll. I don't let my stuff fall apart before I replace it. I replace it well in advance. So it may take me a few rounds to sell these two computers because I'm dealing with a broke segment of America. There's a lot of people who want these computers. They really want them, but they don't have the money for them. And that ain't my problem. That ain't my problem, you know? Uh, I can, you know, once, once again, like these, I am not giving away. I am not giving away this, and I'm not giving away the uh, MacBook Pro because once again, the best place to sell those is eBay, hands down. I can literally, I can take this iPhone, it's an iPhone 13 Pro Max, right? I can put this on eBay as a buy it now for about 900 bucks, it'll be gone before in the morning. So, hands down, like this computer was on Facebook Marketplace, not one response. And I put it on Craigslist, this is when I get all the scamming emails. Dear sir, will you kindly get back to me as such as, I mean, once again. And like I said, this may like sound like I'm over it. Yeah, I am over it. Because like I said, I'm giving away everything in storage. I'm gonna, by the end of this week, tomorrow, a lot of stuff should move. Especially like this, this is my, you saw my trading desk. It used to be a dining room table. I've got six chairs in storage that I have listed 12 times. You know, now, once again, it's not the time of the year. Uh, I feel that if I wanted to hold on to them to about November, I can sell them because people will be looking for chairs for Thanksgiving. But once again, I am getting rid of this because there's an opportunity cost because I have two storage units, I have multiple things to sell, multiple things to list, and to be a good seller, once again, I understand that I'm a terrible car sales person at the moment. I think I get down to four cars. I think I'm going to be a little bit more responsive because I want to wrap it up. But once again, I'm going to bomb the price on these two crash cars, get them, you know, I'm going to get them moved in September. And because once again, this is what I've learned from eBay. This is what I learned from Facebook Marketplace. This is what I learned from Craigslist. These people don't have any money we're dealing with the real rugged economy at the moment and this is just the beginning what we're experiencing right now is going to get worse in the next two years 
So this is why I'm giving this stuff away. This is why I am, um, you know, being pragmatic. Because like I said, I'm a hustler, but when you sit down and crunch the numbers, it doesn't make sense from a number perspective to hold on to this stuff and to keep relisting it, relisting it and to keep meeting these broke people. I, the last five car showings have resulted in people walking away not buying a car. That's where we are with this economy. Once again, I'm gonna say it again. They knew the car had issues before they showed up. And they get there and they like, oh man, it is wrecked. You thought I was just playing? You thought I was just joshing? No, <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna tell you that the car, you know, well, that, that's just stupid. Which brings me to the point of people who are bidding on my items on eBay and getting ghost. This started about three months ago. So this is why I have my strategy, because once again, there's two audiences on eBay. There are the people who don't wanna wait around for an auction that will pony up the money and buy it now. So everything that I have as an auction is also up as a buy it now to split the difference, to give me more opportunities to move this stuff. This computer is up for 7,000. I'll take six. The other laptop, I got it up for 3,400. I'll take three. I may even take 2,800 because I got a lot of use out of that laptop. But once again, this is what I have learned. I am out here in these streets. I am out here participating, doing commerce in these streets. I'm in the digital economy, which is doing very well right now. Digital economy is blowing up. And that's why I kind of hate having to go meet yard birds. Now, typically uh, the best stuff that I had is gone. Typically when people showed up for that, they usually left with that. So I'm down to what I like to refer to as the dregs, the non-name brand stuff. I got a bunch of storage bins. Once again, it hit me. All right, I can keep paying to store these storage bins or when I need some more, just buy some new ones. It's gonna be cheaper to get rid of those storage bins than to hold on to them and to pay a monthly dividend to just hold on to them. So all that stuff, like I said, by the end of the week should be gone and I will be able to close out both of these storage units and it's like, once again, these are the lessons that I've learned from eBay, Facebook, Marketplace, and Craigslist. People don't have money. They just don't have money. And you know, I can feel, I can have empathy for a person who doesn't have money. I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like to be hungry. It sucks, it actually sucks, but I'm not your daddy. <laughs> like I said, uh, I feel that that bedroom set went to a nice family that needs a bedroom set. Because like I said, once I ran the numbers on it, that it could potentially cost me $1,200 or more to hold on to it, to, for you know, spend 1200 bucks to make $500, that don't make no sense. It makes no sense. I had that bedroom set since like 2016. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. Had it six years, let it go. Just Elsa, let it go, let it go, just let it go. Um, that's some other stuff that I've been looking at because I got a vacuum in there, giving it away. Also, I have an office, but here's the thing. I've got furniture in the office that I'm gonna get rid of, but I'm not getting rid of all of it. And I decided to keep the office another year. So that's not actually, you know, that's part of a plan. That's actually a tax deduction. An office rent is a tax deduction. But man, right now these folks don't have no money. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. It's going to get worse for people who are not prepared, for people who are not hustling, for people who are not taking advantage of opportunities, it's just gonna get worse. Oh, and to the people who have a problem, like, all right. Yes, the courses are listed pretty high, pretty substantial. 
But if you use the promo code, you won't pay nothing close to that. But I've had person after person like, man, your, your courses are too expensive. Let's have this conversation. I'm getting ready to get into trading and I've seen a lot of helpful, positive comments about that. Thank you. And I've seen a lot of moist, weak man comments. See, I don't have to do this over here because I can meet the standard. I got the $25,000 to open up the uh, trading account. Like, let me tell you my plans. I'm going to put 100,000 into my day trading business and I'm gonna put 100,000 into my options business. Now, in the beginning, will I be trading with exposing all that money to risk? No, because I don't know what I'm doing. I already know I'm gonna lose money, but I'm gonna start off probably trading with a thousand bucks. And then if I can make that thousand bucks or 2,000 or 3,000 bucks profitable, because once again, I don't have to trade to make money. So I have time to learn the craft of trading. So I'm, I'm you know, my account will be big. I may do some swing tape trading because that's not as risky as day trading, but there's no way in hell that I would risk a hundred K on some day trading activities when I, I'm just brand new to the game. I don't even know all the terminology. So no, no, that would be just stupid. That'd be foolish. So, but once again, stop complaining about my prices to the moist men out there. Stop complaining. If you can't meet the standard, you can't meet the standard. It is what it is because I put out a question and one person like, I'm going to get the discount in October or November. And I put out this question. And for those of you who have been watching me long term, I've never had a sale. Anything that I've put out and done and completed the course, I never bombed the price. I've never done that. I've never done that. And that's how a lot of people, because see, when you do stuff like that, you train people not to take you serious. You train people to wait until the massive discount comes. That's what you train. You train your audience. That's why I don't do that. I've never done that. I don't have no intentions of doing that. That's why I would rather come up with a brand new product that I can open it up pretty reasonably and then grow it from there as I build it out. That, that's what I've been doing for the last four years. I don't bomb the price. I don't, you, you're not going to be able to get this, you know, maybe 10, 12 years in the future. Maybe you can get it as a freebie. If it's no longer effective, <laughs> I'm just keeping it a buck, but yeah, it's about to get very, very bad. My girl was talking about at the grocery store and she was like, I'm tired of going to the grocery stuff and they don't have what I'm looking for this food shortage remember the great toilet paper shortage that's going to start occurring in other areas because this is once again i'm out here in this economy i'm not giving you this from a think tank i'm actually out here participating in the economy selling physical goods selling cars selling digital products i am participating in the distinct economies and i'm telling you i'm giving you feedback on what I'm experiencing in real time. Like this thing with eBay, like I'm gonna keep doing eBay because what it means is like, once again, this is my new strategy. Anything I put up as an auction, I'm just gonna put it up as um, a um, buy it now to get to be serve that crowd. Cause once again, the buy it now crowd is a different crowd than the auction hunters because I, I've been studying this and the auction people, um, they will never, it's like they collectively know, like, let's say I had a MacBook Pro that cost me 2,700 bucks in the auction price. And this guy didn't pay, brand new, actually, yeah. Brand new. You see it's shiny because it's still sealed in the packaging. 
brand new, 2,700 bucks, right? They bid it up to 1,900. And this is something I consistently see, like eBay will tell you like, oh, that price ain't gonna work. But what I have learned is if you, if you can be patient, if you can wait out the cheap yard birds, um, typically you can kind of get your price. I've seen that, but you gotta be patient because, and you gotta deal with all of the low ballers. And like I said, with my new strategy of having the same item up as an auction as a buy it now, and just, you know, when they hit me up with this, send them a link to it. And I don't hear from them again, because they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They don't even want to put in a respectable offer on the buy it now, because these people are broke. They're not broke, they broke broke. They're broke. And this is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Next two years, I predicted that crypto was going to crash again. You know, in Bitcoin, you know, I had some people like, oh, Bitcoin went to 2,500. Yeah, it's going back up. We're going to the moon. I said, it's going to crash again. Bitcoin is back under $20,000 at this moment. And the stock market is going to crash hard in September. Like I said, this isn't going to last forever. I would say probably January, you could start dollar costing back into the market and you may lose a little money, but 10 years in the future, the market should recover. But I feel the next two years are gonna be funky. They're just gonna be funky. And this is why I'm getting into day trading. Day traders love volatility in the market. This is how they make the most money when the market's funky. So that's why I'm getting into that in options once again. Once again, but yeah, this economy is nasty, man. It is nasty. And this guy is, uh, this is funny. Um, I've got all these people asking, and this is something else that I consistently see. I will get several messages about one car, like in the Facebook algorithm, must push one car because I like get five or six messages about this one car. Got a spare wheel. That's funny. And this is one of the things I get a lot of people from out of town to buy these cars. I had a guy who was interested in the BMW. And he's like, I'm coming from Alabama. You think it'll make it back to Alabama? I said, no, that car needs a tune-up. It's not gonna make it to Alabama. You need to bring a tow truck. Once again, I'm not gonna lie to these people and like, yeah, yeah, come here, give me your money. And then you get stalled out somewhere on 285. And no, what? That, that makes no sense to do that to people. But once again, this is what I'm learning from the real economy. This is what I'm seeing in the real economy minus the stimulus money. And I have a feeling that this is probably going to be the worst economic Christmas on the books. That's what it's shaping up to be. Cause like I said, these are the tea leaves. Once again, I am in the marketplace. I'm participating in the marketplace. And this is what I see. All right. Um, we're getting down to it. If you want to get into the intellectual property school, you need to go below and get into it so you can start building up some additional revenue streams to weather the next two years because the next two years is going to be funky. And this is one of the reasons that I am, you know, getting rid of stuff because when I have a whole bunch of stuff up in my spear, it messes with my chi. So I like to be lean and mean and I'm getting rid of stuff. And that's why I'm giving a bunch of stuff away. So once again, if you want to be in the intellectual property school, go below, hit that first link and you can jump in because we're getting ready to do a lot of stuff. Like right now, I've got all of the training complete on how to set up your YouTube channel for tax benefits. And yesterday I added not one, but two videos talking about your equipment. I got the down and dirty version and I got the 
middle road up to baller road for getting video equipment. But all last below, just go below, hit that link, and I will see you in the group.